Today, I want to take you through the five lessons that I learned from losing 21 kg the hard way so that you can avoid all the mistakes that I made if you're looking to lose some weight yourself. I lost that 21 kg, which is just under 50 pounds in just four months after going through a deep depression, a bad breakup, and just feeling like my life was a bit blah. I just turned 30, I was in a job that I hated, and I was broke. It felt like all my friends were doing things with their life, and I was getting left behind. So I did what a lot of guys do when they hit rock bottom. I sulked, but after I sulked, I made a hard pivot. I lost all the weight, I got in great shape, I felt good, I looked good, happy days but i made every mistake in the book and you know what they say one man's mistakes is another man's lessons so from me to you here are those lessons lesson number one is that a pound of fat is bigger than you think it is this is what one pound of fat actually looks like pretty massive in fact it's nearly the same size as my head and that's an important lesson because a lot of people well pretty much everybody goes into their weight loss journey with a number in their head, a number of pounds or stone or kg that they want to lose. But if you ask them why that number is important, and I do that with every single one of my new clients, they don't have an answer, or at least not a good one. The point I'm making is that in terms of numbers on the scales, you probably don't need to lose as much weight as you think you do. And regardless of the amount of weight that you want to lose, don't focus on that big number. Just focus on losing your first pound. Because what you really need is momentum. Starting is by far and away the hardest part. But once you make some progress, it gets a lot easier. But if you focus on that big number, if you're walking around thinking, God, I need to lose 20 or 50 pounds, the chances are more than likely, you're just not gonna start. You're gonna be putting it off because it's just too overwhelming. What I advise my clients to do is to picture one of those massive aircraft carriers because it takes like 10 boats just to get that thing in the water out the harbour and pointing in the right direction. But once those aircraft carriers are out at sea, they are flying. Well, not literally, well not yet anyway, but you know what I mean. When you're right at the start of your journey, your only objective is to get in the water, get out the harbour and point yourself in the right direction. Don't worry about how you're going to lose all the weight that you want to lose because that number is probably less than you think it is. Don't worry about trying to be perfect because you're new to this and it would be unrealistic and irrational to expect you to be perfect, let alone even good. Just get in the water. Okay, lesson number two is that you don't actually need a diet to lose weight. You don't need to do vegan or carnivore or keto or intermittent fasting or any nonsense like that. I didn't know that back when I lost 21 kg in just four months though. I cut out carbs, I skipped meals, I even cried myself to sleep on several occasions. Yeah, I lost the weight fast, but all that pain and suffering was completely unnecessary because all you actually need to lose weight is something called a calorie deficit. Now, You've probably heard of that before. It's not new and I didn't invent it. But a lot of people, especially these days, seem to have gotten it confused with just another fad diet, which it absolutely isn't. So what actually is a calorie deficit? Well, simply put, a calorie deficit is when you eat fewer calories than your body needs, which forces it to use stored fat as energy, as fuel. I think that the easiest way to think about this is to picture your calorie intake as a daily spending budget. When you're in a calorie deficit, your body has to pull from the savings account, which is your stored fat, to make up for any extra needs. And a calorie deficit is all you need to lose fat. You don't need a special diet, you don't need to cut out a specific list of foods, and you certainly don't need to do hours of cardio. It's just basic maths. Every single one of us has a unique calorie deficit number because it's based on our body's physiology, our age, our weight, our height, and our sex, but it's also based on how active our lifestyle is. So if you wanna calculate your calorie deficit number, just take your body weight in pounds and multiply it by 14. That's your maintenance calorie number. All you gotta do then is subtract 500 from that. And the reason that you're gonna subtract 500 is because there's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat in one of these, which means if you're in a 500 calorie deficit for seven days, seven days in a week, you're gonna lose a pound of fat every single week. So to recap, take your body weight in pounds, multiply by 14, subtract 500, and that's your calorie deficit. Lesson number three actually builds on that second lesson because most coaches and fitness influencers online will tell you that the best way to lose weight and burn fat is to eat 500 calories less, but there's a much easier way. It takes about eight minutes to do a thousand steps, which means you can do 8,000 in just over an hour. And here's the cool part. If you do that, you're gonna burn an extra 250 calories every day. And that now means you only need to eat 250 calories less to create that 500 calorie daily deficit that you need to lose a pound of fat a week. And 250 calories is nothing. 
cut out one snack or a fizzy drink and you've done it. And most importantly, doing it this way means that you don't need a diet to lose weight. So lesson number three is to split your deficit. Move 250 calories more so that you only have to eat 250 calories less. By the way, I am only scratching the surface with these lessons today. If you want me to give you 30 tips just like this in the next 30 days that are guaranteed to help you lose your next five to 10 pounds, then click the top link in the description of the video and I'll send you some straightforward and genuinely useful advice each day. Okay, lesson four is to look at your calorie deficit through a wider lens. Let me explain what I mean because this simple shift has helped my clients to stay on track and keep losing fat even on tough days. So we've already covered that there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat, and that if you create a 3,500 calorie deficit over the course of a week, you will lose one of these. And like I said, at this stage, what most people do is they take that 3,500 calorie deficit and they divide it by seven because there's seven days in a week, and they try to eat 500 calories less every single day. But here's the thing, even if you split the difference of your deficit, like we just spoke about, if you try to hit the same calorie goal every single day, you're setting yourself up to fail. Why? Well, because you're not a robot and life doesn't always go our way. In fact, perfect days are a dime a dozen, aren't they? Traffic jams, annoying bosses, sickness, kids, train delays, hangovers, you name it. There's a lot that can go wrong and there's a lot that will go wrong. There will come a day where you just can't track your calories. And there will also come a day where you just want that extra large pizza or that beer or five, but that's okay. Instead of stressing out and trying to hit your calorie goal every single day, zoom out and think bigger. Multiply your daily calorie budget by seven and treat it like a weekly budget. That way, if you go over one day, which you will, it's not a disaster. And as long as you balance it out over the rest of the week and you still hit that 3,500 calorie deficit, you're still gonna lose one of these every single week. This approach gives you flexibility. It's realistic and most importantly, it's actually sustainable. It's also way less stressful and it will keep you from feeling like a failure when things just don't go perfectly because none of us are perfect, right? Last but certainly not least, lesson number five is that cardio is completely unnecessary. A lot of people couldn't believe it when I lost 21 kg in just four months, especially when I told them that I didn't do any cardio. But I, like you, didn't like being called a liar. So I came up with an experiment to prove my point. I strapped my Apple Watch to my wrist, which has unfortunately since broken. I found a three kilometer route near to my house here in Spain, I walked that three kilometer route and then I turned around and ran back the exact same three kilometers. Now, before I show you, can you guess how many more calories I burn on the run versus the walk? 50, 100, 200? Well, see for yourself. Look at the total calories. The difference was just 14. I burned 241 calories on the walk and 255 calories on the run. Look, I'm not denying that running has health benefits. But if you hate running, like me, and you're just doing it because you think that you have to, please, for the love of God, just stop. Because for the sake of 14 calories between running and walking, just ask yourself these two questions. Which is more sustainable and which is less likely to get me injured? I know which I would pick every single day. Look, losing weight isn't easy, but it can be simple. And I really hope this video has helped you to see that. But like I said earlier, I could keep going. I have learned a ton of lessons from my own journey but also from the last five years, coaching hundreds of people all over the world. So if you want more lessons like this, tap the link in the description and I'll send you some straightforward and genuinely useful advice each day for the next 30 days to help you lose your next five to 10 pounds.